Hello everyone. Today, us, the IBDP1 students, are going to introduce you to the topic water properties. And we hope this video will help you understand the topic better. And do not forget to subscribe, like, and leave your opinion below. Structure of water. Water is made up of two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to an oxygen atom. While this covalent bonding involves the sharing of electrons, they are not shared equally between the atoms. Oxygen attracts the electrons more strongly. Shared electrons orbit closer to the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atoms resulting in polar uh, polarity. Here you can see the properties of water. Firstly, water is polar. A polar molecule is a molecule in which one end of the molecule is slightly positive, while the other end is slightly negative. Second, water is an excellent solvent. Water has high heat capacity. It helps with regulating the temperature in the environment. Water also has high heat of vaporization. It has cohesive and adhesive properties, which will be introduced later on. And lastly, water is less dense as a solid than as a liquid, which means that ice is less dense than liquid water, which is why ice floats. Water is described as being polar because it has a slight charge difference across the different poles of molecules. The oxygen atom is slightly negative, while the hydrogen atoms are slightly positive. This charge difference across the molecule allows water to form weak associations with the other polar molecules. The slightly negative poles will attract the slightly positive poles of other molecules and vice versa. When a positive hydrogen atom is attracted to a, a negative Negative fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atom, or another molecule, it forms a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are relatively stronger than other polar associations due to the high electronegativity of F, O, and N. Specific heat capacity is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin. Water requires much energy to change its temperature and releases huge amount of energy to melt. It can remain the same temperature while carrying a lot of heat. Therefore, water ma maintains relatively constant temperature uh, of the body. This is why the icebergs in Antarctica do not melt easily. The latent heat of vaporization is the amount of energy that must be added to a liquid substance to transform a quantity of that substance into a gas. Hydrogen bonds need to break for water to evaporate. This, is pro uh, this process requires a lot of energy. Therefore, it is a great coolant, transpiration or sweating, as it absorbs much of the energy to become a gas. At high boiling point, water is a liquid in a range of uh, 0 to 100 degrees of Celsius. As it has a high latent heat of evaporization, water has a high boiling point too. So osmosis. Um, first, we need to talk about what osmosis is, because looking at the picture, you can't really understand anything. Um, Semi-permeable membrane. The semi-permeable membrane is kind of like a border that lets the water go from a region of low solute concentration to a region of high solute concentration. Um, but you guys might be asking that, uh, does only water go through the semi-permeable membrane or do other things do as well? The, quite, the answer is only water, because things like salt molecules, sand, and stilt just don't. This is only for water. Um, there's also something called osmolarity. Um, osmolarity is the uh, comparison between solution and a cell, but this comparison is only available when not mixing them. So after mixing them, we can't say that it's osmolarity. So you guys remember how we talked about osmolarity and it's the comparison between a solution and a cell? Well, there's also something called tonicity that we use to describe when a solution affects a cell, when a cell is placed in it. Now whatever happens to it, it swells, shrinks, or just stays the same, uh, it's still tonicity. Uh, but this is when the cell and an extracellular fluid are mixed. So back to osmosis and there is also something called osmotic pressure. Uh, we could say that osmotic pressure is the obstacle uh, that kind of doesn't let uh, the 
osmosis happen because because of this pressure it can't go from low to high it's kind of like an obstacle and fun fact you can actually use cylinders or discs of a fresh potato to investigate osmosis in a living cell water likes to stick to itself but under certain circumstances it actually prefers to stick to other types of molecules adhesion is the attraction of molecules of one kind for molecules of a different kind and it can actually be quite strong for water especially with molecules bearing positive or negative charges for instance adhesion enables water to climb upwards through thin glass tubes called capillary tubes placed in a beaker of water this upward motion against gravity is known as capillary action Capillary action depends on the attraction between water molecules and the glass walls of the tube, adhesion, as well as interactions between molecules, cohesion. So what is cohesion? Have you ever filled a glass of water to the very top and then slowly added a few more drops? Before it overflows, the water forms a dome-like shape above the rim of the glass. This dome-like shape forms due to the water molecule's cohesive properties. Cohesion refers to the attraction of molecules for other molecules of the same kind, and water molecules have strong cohesive forces thanks to their ability to form hydrogen bonds with one another. One important fact to remember is that cohesive forces are responsible for surface tension. Adhesion and cohesion in the xylem walls of a plant. Through the process of osmosis, a nutri nutrients keep mo moving forward toward the center of the root to the xylem which is a tube that then sends the water and nutrients of the root and into the stem. During osmosis, water moves, through, water moves from an area of lower concentration to the area of higher concentration. Capillary action. Once the water and nutrients are inside the xylem, adhesion and cohesion continue to move the water up through the plant. Adhesion occurs when the plant molecules cling to the xylem tissue. Adhesion provides the forces to pull water up the sides of the tube in the xylem cell. Cohesion tension. Cohesion occurs when the water molecules stick to each other. Cohesion causes the water in the tube of the root and stem to become one long column of fluid and nutrients. As water evaporates from the plant into the atmosphere, called transpiration in plants but respiration in animals, the column of water continues to move up to fill the space left by the water molecules that were pulled out of the leaves upon evaporation. The water column cannot be broken or pulled away from the xylem walls because the adhesion and cohesion of water. Water surface tension. The surface tension of water is 72, which is one of the highest surface tensions for any liquid, apart from mercury, because mercury is the only metal found in liquid form. The high surface tension is caused by strong molecular reactions, and it arises due to cohesive interactions between the molecules and the liquid. And in the image, we can see an insect floating because of the water's high density. So the causes of high surface tension. As we know, water is consisted of oxygen and hydrogen, and they are bonded together by covalent bonds. But if another hydrogen and oxygen want to bond together, they will bond with hydrogen bonds, and this will lead to more strong cohesive forces between the water molecules, which is why uh, there is a high surface tension. And at the surface, there are fewer water molecules to cling to since there is air above, so this results into a stronger bond between the surface molecules and a stronger layer is formed. Turgor. Turgor pressure, the pressure that is exerted by the fluid against the cell wall. The pressure in a liquid at rest can be measured by the density of the liquid, the acceleration of gravity, and the depth of the fluid column. When the pressure from the fluid involves water as a result of influx across a semi-permeable membrane, it is referred to as osmotic pressure. Because of the differences in the solute concentrations between solutions, water diffuses to where there are more sol solutes. This tendency of water to move from one area to another is called water potential. When water moves into the cell, the cell becomes turgid. The condition where the cell is turgid or swollen is called turgidity. Turgor is what makes living plant tissue rigid. Loss of turgor resulting from the loss of water from plant cells causes flowers and leaves to wilt. Plant cell turgor, plant turgor pressure. Water can travel through the cell walls and membrane of a plant cell. This is driven by osmosis. Then, the water will leave the cell if the environment has high solute percentage, for example salts. 
then the cell will lose its turgor. Water will then enter the cell if the concentration of solutes is higher in the cell than it is on the outside. The cell will swell and have turgor. Now there are these things called hydrophilic and hydrophobic structures. If a substance interacts well with water and it dissolves in it, it's called hydrophilic. Hydro means water and philic means loving. But for example, oils and fats do not interact well with water, they do not dissolve in it, and these substances are called hydrophobic. Phobic means fearing. And in the image, we see a typical structure of a membrane. And as we know, membranes are consisted of phospholipid bilayers. And these phospholipids are consisted of two parts, hydrophilic head, which means they love water, and hydrophobic tails, which means they don't like water. That's why the heads uh, connect with each other and they are outside of the membrane, and the hydrophilic tails are connected together and they are inside of the membrane because they don't like water. These are the works cited, and that was the end of our video. We hope it was really useful for you. Do not forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave your opinion in the comments. Thank you!